Um, welcome to our next segment of uh, giftable things that you can sew. Um, we are going to be sewing two different kinds of reusable gift wrap. Um, I have an example of one here. It's very, very simple. It's literally just a piece of fabric that I have hemmed with a mitered corner. The mitered corner is that where that, um, fold where they meet nicely. And, um, that kind of corner is also great if you are sewing napkins, tea towels. It's the same kind of corner that you use when you're sewing binding on quilts, though it's done a little bit differently. You can use it in clothes if you're doing a split hem. So it's a great skill to master. Um, it is not beyond a basic sewist's ability to do. And then we're going to do a second style that uh, B just showed us how to do um, with uh, a button and some twill tape. So it's super cute. I'm very excited. This should not take long. I've done some prep work ahead of time. So I'm going to start by bringing my camera down here. I'm going to do this. Let's see if we can do this. Oh, no. That was absolutely wrong. Oh, my goodness. The people who, oh, no, what's happened now? Ah, the people who are watching, I'm so sorry. Ah, Emily's sliding camera has nothing on me dropping the camera on the floor. And losing it laughing. I'm so sorry to whoever is watching. I was trying to to move it so that there we go. It's pushed in so that you can see my board here. <laughs> One second. I gotta not lose it anymore. These are some helpful tools that you will find you will need when making this wrapping. You will need an iron for pressing your hem. I like my um, wool ironing mat as well. It gets everything very sharp and very crisp because it heats from the bottom as well as from the top. I like using flatter spray. Not only does it smell nice, it um, gets any wrinkles out and I don't tend to pre-wash this fabric so it is wrinkly right off the bolt. You'll need um, a marking tool of some kind. I have here a water soluble pencil. Um, you're not going to see any of the marks. So if it washes out, um, that's fine. I find the heat erase ones don't work as well because you are ironing and you're then ironing off your marks. You'll need some sort of point turning tool. This is my trusty bamboo one that is full of glue and, um, interfacing. Uh, you'll need snips and then you'll need a marking tool. Um, I pulled out this one because it's so cute. It's two and a half inch square. It's just, it's cute. It's very cute. Um, so we're going to do the mitered corners first. And I've got um, my, my piece here that I've started to prep. Um, I've done one corner already. I'm going to move this out of the way for a second. Actually, I've got to turn this on. My little iron. Love my little iron. Um, so I've already ironed and prepared these just to save us some time. Um, you don't need to, to watch me iron things. What you need to do is you need to turn your hem. Uh, I'm sorry. So your square is cut um, square. Uh, this one is 30 inches by 30 inches. Um, I've, I've made some that are 40 inches by 40 inches. The smallest I've done is 15 inches by 15. And that one was pretty tiny. Um, I found when wrapping things, the most usable size to have is the 30 inch size. Um, so cut your square to 30 inches, and then you're going to turn your raw edges up twice. I've turned mine up um, by an inch. Um, I probably would have done it a little bit less, um, but I want, if this was for myself, but I wanted to be able to give you a good visual. Um, let me know if any of that's unclear so far. 
Now what you need to do is on your corner, you can see here, that was the one that I'd done already. We have it folded twice. You need to unfold. So this should be like, so you need to unfold once so that you've only got one fold. And there are lines here from that second fold. And we're going to fold so that those crease marks meet that first folded edge. And then we can give a good iron to get your crease. We're going to flip our work over and we're going to mark where that crease is that we've just made. Um, and you can mark it all the way across if you want, okay? And then we're going to fold this so that those, those edges meet on the diagonal, like so. And you can see the crease on the other side. We can mark that. And this is going to be the line that we stitch. So just to do it again, take your double fold, unfold it once on both sides, fold so that the second crease meets the edge of the fabric. And you've got a triangle here. So it's, uh, I guess it's parallel to, not parallel to, intersecting, um, I guess. We f give it iron so that we have that crease in there. We're going to flip our work over, mark your crease, make those marks meet on the diagonal. And if you've got this little extra bit here, that's fine. That's going to get cut off. And then mark your diagonal line. Now over to the sewing machine. And what we're going to do is we're going to sew along that diagonal line. Oh, I got to turn this on. So we have now sewn that diagonal line. I'm just gonna, uh, you can see it better on this side. So we've sewn along that line. Do it on the other side that I did as well. I wonder if I like, if there's a way for me to give you a better visual here. I got to figure that out. That's a 2023 problem. I think I need to invest in a GoPro. Um, so we'll come back over here because we're going to need the iron again. We can cut, leaving yourself about a quarter inch of a seam allowance. And we cut again on this side. And if it's not perfect, it is not the end of the world. And then we, so this is the fold, we flip it inside. We can poke it out with our pokey tool. And give it a nice press. And that is your mitered corner. And then the last step is to sew 
all around the edge here. So again, I'm just going to trim my threads. Take your corner, poke it out, poke it with the pokey tool. Don't poke through your fabric. It's very easy to do that. Give it a nice press. And ta-da! That's it. Um, it's as simple as that. If you were making napkins, you would do this. If you were doing tea towels. Um, and then sew all the way around the edge. Um, which I will not do because that's uh, we don't need to do that tonight. Um, how you would use this to tie... I'll use my smaller one because it's easier to see. Um, laying it so it's like uh, diamond shaped. Put your box. Um, and this is not my kids. This is my Lego. Um, you flip one corner up. You flip. So the bottom comes up. The top comes down. And then the sides come in. And you tie and ta-da! You have a nice little gift. Super easy. You can tuck this in. You could tuck a card in there. Um, very easy. Um, very nice. And you know, make it part of the gift um, so then someone can use it for something else in the future. So the second kind, you will need two equally sized pieces of fabric, some twill tape, and a button and we are going to there's going to be more sewing on this one maybe i'm going to attempt something here uh, i'm going to need one Oops. you will need pins for this one we are going to sew this piece i'm going to trim this piece of tool tape because it's kind of long i'm going to cut it in half um this piece of fabric that I'm sewing, again, you need two equal squares. This one is 18 inches by 18 inches. Um, my twill tape is about 25 inches, 30 inches. Um, it's a little bit on the long side, but I'd rather have it long and then trim it. And we're going to attach it in the corner. Um, you could absolutely baste this into place. If you are a newer sewist, I recommend basting it into place. Um, I am not going to. Uh, I was talking to one of my in-person students last night, and I was telling the class, you know, don't skip the important steps. Don't skip basting. Don't skip stay stitching. Don't skip understitching. And she said, except when you tell us to skip them. I'm like, yeah, well... <laughs> You get to a point when you're sewing where you know what you can skip and what you can't skip. And I know that I can skip basting the twill tape into the corner and that if you are a new sewist, you should not skip that step. Um, and I did not cut this very well, it looks like, because it's not lining up, but that's okay because it's just a piece of wrapping paper. Um, we will need to leave ourselves a hole um, somewhere along the edge to turn our work. Otherwise, we are going to sew all the way around. Um, I, I see I have two friends watching. Which, which two friends do I have watching with me tonight? I would love to know. Please say hi if you're not too shy. Um, I'm going to try something. <sighs> See if we can do this. We're going to take you on a... No, I can't do that because it get, doesn't go that way. I'm going to move my whole sewing machine. There we go. I want you to see this part. There we go. There's my sewing machine. So you can watch the sewing. Um, so we are going to go. I'm going to start. Make sure you don't sew over the tail, um, like the, the, the length of your, your piece here. I'm going to use a half inch seam allowance. And 
and I might sew a little extra just to give that twill tape some more stability an extra row of stitches there we go same thing here just sew a little extra row of stitches and now we go all the way around and I can feel the bulk of my twill tape here I'm just going to reach my hand inside my work and make sure that it's not going to get caught in the seam because that would be bad Oh, you know what I entirely forgot? I entirely forgot a hand needle to sew on the button. Because you absolutely need that. Going all the way around. Maybe next time I won't move the camera, I'll move the sewing machine. That would probably be easier. Here we go. And we're coming back up to the part. Nope, we've got one more turn, corner to turn. You can see that my, my cutting was not super even and I'm having a hard time. I'm sitting to the side of my sewing machine right now. This is not normally how I would sew. I would have my body centered. So we'll see how this turns out. It's going to be a bit of an experiment. Um, sew right up to this wonder clip, back stitch. There we go. off. Turn myself around again. There we go. The real problem is that directly in behind me, directly in behind me is my like big iron and my big ironing board and it's kind of poking me in the back and I don't have much space in here. So we're going to take our square now and we're going to turn it the right way around. You could absolutely trim your seam allowance and clip your corners if you wanted, but it's not a huge seam allowance. It's not totally necessary. We're going to use our pokey tool again to poke out all of our corners, and we're going to give this a nice, a nice press with this iron. And did I, did I miss, did people say anything? No, nobody said anything. That's okay. We can all be shy tonight. Or I will talk for everybody. Uh, it is a thing I do. Um, so we're going to poke out that corner. And we're going to poke out this corner. And just making sure that that seam inside is lying flat. It's easier to maneuver to work on this side now. Just lying this in here and running it along the seam like this is helping me get a nice flat seam and you can't see that with my hand inside but that's the motion I'm making and then the final one just along here same motion And 
we're going to um, top stitch. I would say top stitch all the way around. We're going to make sure that the, the um, so our hole, we turn that edge underneath on both sides. And you can turn the lining a little bit more and that will help the, the top sit nicely. I'm going to use a couple of clips here. And I am going to quickly just give this a top stitch. I won't move the camera all the way around. You'll have to watch it from this side this time. That was easier. Um, here we go. And I'm going to top stitch it at a quarter inch. And normally I would use um, not a contrast thread. I would use a... Um, matching thread but for the sake of expediency this is what I have in my machine right now and it doesn't look too bad you can see my seam is not super flat on this side but it doesn't really matter here this didn't quite poke out very nicely that's okay I find it um, difficult to do certain things sitting down that I'm used to doing standing up and you've got that extra pressure behind you when you're standing up the extra force of the weight of your body that you don't have when you're sitting down amazed at what steam gets out. Go make sure we don't sew over that length of twill tape. Another day I will show everybody how to attach buttons with their sewing machine because I learned how to do that recently and like mind blown. Um, it is it is one of the coolest things that I have ever done. For certain. Excellent. And now we attach the button just here in the corner. You could very easily, um, where did my button go? I lost my button. There's my button. I'm gonna grab a hand needle here. Excellent. And just use some of the same thread that I was sewing with. And no, I do not have that needle in my mouth and you should absolutely definitely not do that. Um, Bad sewing habit bingo, for certain. I'm just going to thread this needle. Cut way too long of a thread, but that's okay. I really hate sewing on buttons. Um, I don't know why. So, yes, we're just going to sew that button on there. I'm going to go into my seam. here and then hopefully bury my knot inside and this is not a precise operation 
um, at all. Yep, buried my knot inside. Perfect. It does not need to be. It, um, it just needs to be on there. And poke yourself in the finger for good measure, because, you know, again, why not? I'm going to turn my iron off before I burn myself. And we'll do one more stitch here. Um, we're coming up to the end of this. I'll show you how to wrap this now, but uh, let me know if anybody has any questions. If you um, are catching this video on the rewatch, please feel free to leave those questions in the comments. Um, we will definitely answer them. Um, let us know if you have any comments, if you enjoyed this video, um, if you're making any wrappings. Uh, and th these are obviously, we're doing these in time for the, um, the holiday season. Uh, but they could definitely be used for any gift-giving occasion, a birthday, an anniversary, um, a, 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 a hostess gift if you have a party to go to. Just move my needle so that it's not... Um... And there we go. Ta-da! So you've got your wrapping. So what we do with this one is, again, going to turn it over to the wrong side. I'm going to unwrap this present first. I don't have another box handy and this is a great size box. So we're going to um, start by folding up the bottom. We're going to fold in the side and fold in one side, fold in oh, the bottom keeps shifting. Fold in the side. Fold in, oh no, maybe you have to do the sides first, sorry. Fold in the side, fold in the other side, fold up the bottom, you can put a fold in it like so. Then fold, oh, and did we not see this? Well, there we go. Then fold down the top, take that twill tape, wrap it around the bottom, and then, and mine is long enough, I could probably do it, you know, twice and then wrap it around that button and ta-da you've got another little envelope package gift and you could definitely like tuck stuff down but it's ready to go and ready to gift for Christmas um, or Hanukkah or whatever gift giving occasion you have so that's it. Um, as simple as that. Very easy, very approachable. Um, if you've got a kid who's keen to start sewing, this would be a great project. Put on some Christmas music, make some hot chocolate and give this one a try. Um, thanks for joining us. Uh, look for next week's video is not going to be live. Michelle's going to pre-record a demonstration on how to make gift bags. Uh, another wrapping technique because uh, that's what we need at this time of year. Anyways, thanks, folks. Take care.